Last week on SAR Trail, we camped in a beautiful part of Colorado's Rocky Mountains and learned new ways to cope with winter weather. This week, we are back in Utah to start a journey that will have us traveling and camping through a maze of canyons and riverbeds. We are extremely blessed to live in Colorado. It is an amazing state for overlanding, and it puts us really close to Utah. We are glad to be back on her dirt. We have really grown to love the diverse landscape and quiet trails of this 4x4 paradise. We left Colorado to escape the winter weather. Honestly, we were a little bit surprised to find this much snow on the ground in this part of Utah. A smooth trail like this is a welcome change for us because we still have some repairs and upgrades to do to our front suspension. We will be upgrading our worn out upper control arms and making a few other improvements as well. Trails that are easy to travel are often crowded with all kinds of vehicles, but this part of Utah isn't popular like the areas with the big name trails. Here, we're just surrounded by the beautiful landscape and no one else. Isolation is in abundance. With sundown approaching, we needed to find a spot for the night. This time of year, we try to cook and eat dinner while the sun is still up, but that doesn't always work out. We did, however, find a completely level campsite with incredible canyon wall views. All right, so, we found a really beautiful campsite. Honestly, there's more snow on the ground than we were anticipating, but we do have our snow boots, so we're gonna be okay. We're gonna start getting camp set up, get a fire set up because it's chilly out here. I'm not gonna lie to you. Not as cold as the mountains in Colorado at 10,000 feet where we thought about going, but it's still a little bit chilly, but there's hardly any breeze, so it's really, really gorgeous. So now, let's get set up.
Okay guys, we got camp sort of set up. I still got to go up into the rooftop tent and uh, get it all set up and get our lights on in there and everything. But we're looking good here to make dinner. Natalie, what are we making? I've uh, got chili. We're going to heat up, cook over by the fire. Hopefully we won't burn it this time. We burned it last time. Yeah, you saw on our last Moab trip, the first day that we stayed, uh, we burnt the chili. We stuck it right on the fire instead of having it kind of pushed to the side where it wouldn't get so hot. So it's probably in like a thousand degrees. So we burnt it. Which we know better. We know better. We were in a hurry. We were cold <laughs> like now. Yeah. So it's going to be in the teens tonight. It's probably, what, 20 degrees right now? Yeah. I think we dropped down to like 15 or 13 tonight. So we're going to get around the fire. We're going to get warm. We're going to get this cooking. I'm going to set up the tent. Baby, go for it, please. Make it awesome. All right, so I've already just got some onion and some ground beef in here. I'm going to just saute up on the fire. And then I'm going to throw some beans and some tomato sauce on top with some seasoning. And it should turn out really good. to show you the inside of the tent so check out what we got going here we got the luma noodles up in here that's a permanent mount inside of our rooftop tent now which has been a really nice upgrade for us secondly to stay warm we're not bringing our uh, zero degree double seriously awesome warm sleeping bag because it's a lot of work to pack it into the bag to stuff it into that bag and I really got to do it when I'm standing up and you can't stand up in here so since we're moving every single night of this overlanding trip, we want to try something different. So we got our big comforter, which we typically use a lot when it's not super cold, um, which is really warm. We've used this down into the, certainly into the low 20s. And then we got a layer of fleece. Then we have another layer of fleece. Uh, then we have a sheet down here below as well. We got Bailey's sleeping bag, which she's going to be in this and then have all of this on top of her. Plus Natalie and I will be in here. So we're hoping this does a trick for us because I think we're 13, 15 degrees, something like that tonight. We warm up just a smidge over the next couple days. Each night we get a couple degrees warmer, but we never really get all that comfortable. But we're gonna go for it. If we get super cold uh, and we can't cuddle up enough, then we're gonna be diving down into the Hummer and turning on the heat or something like that. But I think we're gonna be all right. So off to dinner now, let's go. We had a great dinner and enjoyed the beautiful night sky, but before the temperature dropped any more, we decided it was time to bundle up in our tent and hibernate until sunrise. Morning came and we stayed in the tent until the sun was up and we were much warmer. Last night we were in such a rush to get set up and cook dinner before we got cold that we really didn't take the time to appreciate our campsite. But draped in the morning light, the beauty of our surroundings was undeniable. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, it was seriously cold last night. The, the whole inside of our tent had a sheet of ice on it. We've never had that much ice before. We've had like little frost here and there, but literally the whole inside, it was like an igloo. It was pretty crazy. So we got it up right now, we got it thawing out. Our, our comforter, because of everything, it was just completely, the top surfaces of our comforter was really wet. It took us about an hour or two for us to warm up in there. We got too cold last night, ate dinner way too late, and so we got up there and we were really, really cold. It took a while for us to warm up, but then we did okay. We all slept in coats last night. Yeah, we slept in, I slept in two kind of like sweater type of coat things, and whatever. We, we stayed warm. All right, so Natalie, what are we having for breakfast? Um, so we're, I'm just making something up. We're having... Um, sweet potatoes and eggs and so uh, like some chicken sausage scrambled up on the scottle 
And then I'm going to do some little mini waffles on the side with some um, maple syrup. And what are we doing the mini waffles on? What do you mean? What are we cooking them on? Oh, on the scottle. Our scottle's working again! <laughs> Woohoo! It's like our favorite piece of cooking equipment. Yeah. And we got the new burner for it. Man, we were so excited. You saw on our last trip to Utah that we didn't have our scottle working, but now it is working again, so we're excited. <laughs> There was just something relaxing about taking our time for breakfast and coffee and soaking in the sunshine. We often find ourselves rushing in life and trying to squeeze 25 hours into every day. But when we just enjoy the moment, great memories are made. Some of our best conversations happen around this table on lazy mornings. You guys see us grind our coffee a lot and it really is the only way to do it when we're at home we grind every cup of coffee that we make we have an electric grinder at home and out here we have the hand crank and it's the only way I don't need a cup of coffee but if I'm gonna drink a cup of coffee it's gonna be fresh So check this out. Oh, it just, honestly, oops, it does not get better than that. So what we do is, each one of these makes one cup of coffee. So there's three of us today drinking coffee, so three of these things. How's it coming? Good. Around here, you want a cup of coffee? You gotta earn your keep. You want me to finish that one? Perfect. All right, I'm gonna do one more and then we're good to go. The coffee's ready, baby. After we finished our coffee, we packed up the Hummer and headed back on the trail. Join us next Friday as we make our way to those distant canyon walls in search of a campsite on the San Rafael River.